Hi everyone, this will be the last installment in our capital budgeting series where we're going to be talking about internal rate of return. So, so let's, start let's start out by talking what, about what internal rate of return is. The internal rate of return is the rate of return a, a company can expect to earn when they invest in a certain project or investment. So in other words, this is the interest rate that is going to cause your net present value to be zero. So if you think back to our video on net present value, where net present value is zero, that's where we're getting the required rate of return. So in this case, internal rate of return is where we can make net present value be zero. And we're going to learn a few different ways that we can do that. So we're going to identify the expected net cash receipts from the investment. We're then going to find the discount rate that makes total present value of the net cash receipts from the asset equal the present value of cash outflows from the asset. So in other words, we're going to be looking for the annuity factor or the annuity present value factor. And to do that, we can take the cost of the investment and we can divide that by the annual net cash inflows from the asset. Now once we find this annuity present value factor, we're going to go into our tables, our town value of money tables, and we're going to look for that factor on the present value of an annuity table, scan the row that corresponds to the expected life, and then we're going to choose the column that's closest to the annuity factor that we, the annuity factor that we calculated in part two. And we're going to see how that works here with an example. All right, so here we have two projects, and we're going to want to calculate the IRR for each one, and then identify if either one of these are good investments or which one's the better investment. So we'll do project A together. So project A costs $272,000 and offers eight annual net cash inflows of $60,000. Salon Products requires an annual return of 14% on projects like A. So let's see here. We're going to calculate the IRR. So the first thing we want to do is calculate the annuity factor, the present value of an annuity factor. So we're going to take the cost of the asset, $272,000, and divide that by the $60,000 annual net cash inflow. So $60,000. When we do this, we get a factor of 4.533. Now we want to go into our tables and we're going to scan over, we're going to look for the eighth period in our chart and we're going to scan over until we find the annuity factor of 4.533. So let's see what we come up with. So here's our annuity table over on the right hand side and I've already shown you what we're going to end up with here. Um, we're going to end up with 14 to 16%. Let's see how we find that. So they tell us that this offers eight annual net cash inflows. So I'm going to look for the periods column, and I'm going to scan down to the eighth column. Then I'm going to scroll over until I find the annuity factor of 4.533. So when we do that, we actually don't find 4.533 anywhere in our table. However, we do find that it lands somewhere between these two numbers. So we can give an approximation that this investment is going to bring in somewhere between 14 and 16 percent. But using this method, it doesn't tell us the exact IRR. So using this method, I would like for you to attempt Project B. So push pause on your player now and see if you can come up with a range for the IRR for Project B. Once you find that, come back and we'll take a look at it together. So when you find the, the annuity factor for project B, you should have found 5.429 as the factor. So this tells us project B is going to have nine annual net cash inflows. So we're going to go to our periods column. We're going to scroll down until we get to row number nine. And then we're going to scroll to the right until we find 5.429. Well, we don't find that number, but we do find that number lies in between this 5.759 and 
and 5.328. So we can approximate and say that this investment is going to bring in between 10 and 12 percent. But again, using this method, we can't really figure out the exact amount. But now we're going to see two different methods that we can use to find the exact IRR. One method we can use to find the exact IRR is very simple. We can use Excel. So you can see I've set up a very simple Excel spreadsheet here. And I set up the initial investment as a negative number because that's cash going out. And each cash flow is cash flow coming in, so it's a positive number. And then down in the cell where I want to calculate the IRR, that is where I type my formula. So equals IRR, then parentheses, and then select the fields with the numbers that you're wanting to use to calculate IRR, and that will spit out the exact IRR for this investment. So we know that it's supposed to be somewhere between 14 and 16 percent, and that exactly is exactly correct. It's 14.69 percent to be exact. Now this was for project A. Well, let's look at project B. So we find project B very similarly. We know it's somewhere between 10 and 12 percent. We use the same IRR formula here in our cell, and we do find that it is somewhere between 10 and 12 percent. It's exactly 11.512 percent. So make sure you try this in an Excel spreadsheet and see if you can get this to work for each one of these before you move forward. Now both project and A, both projects A and B had equal cash inflows, so they were annuities. But what if they have unequal cash flows? Well, Excel makes that very easy. We use the same process as we see here. We're going to use Excel, we're going to set up a spreadsheet, and let's say for example this is our spreadsheet, and you can see I've set up unequal cash flows, and we still set up our formula in our cell here, and when we do that, it spits out the exact IRR, internal rate of return, for this initial investment of a million dollars and these five unequal cash inflows. Well, what happens when we don't have access to Excel, for example? What are we going to do to figure out the exact IRR, internal rate of return? We can use what's called the trial and error method, and then we can add something to that to find the exact IRR. So in this method, we're going to just kind of figure it out. We're going to use different factors, different percentages, and figure out where net present value is zero. So in this case, in this little example here, these are unequal cash flows, so we can't use the annuity table, the present value of an annuity table. We have to use the present value of the lump sum tables. And then each one of these would have the factor from that particular corresponding year. Okay, so these would be the factors that we would pick from our table. And you can check your table for these factors. So this would be the present value of lump sum tables, 16%. Years 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Just check your factors with your table and you should see those. But what we find here is we haven't found a present value of 0 yet. We actually haven't even got to a negative amount yet. So we can tell just by this simple thing here that the, that the internal rate of return of this investment is more than 18%. We're getting close to 0 as we move higher, but we're not there yet. So we know that this investment is bringing in more than 18%. So let's use an example here with some real numbers and see what we come up with. So here's an example. Mac Industries is deciding whether to automate one phase of its production process. The manufacturing equipment has a four-year life and will cost $750,000. Projected net cash inflows are as follows. So you can see we have four net cash inflows and they are all differing amounts. So we have unequal net cash inflows. What I'd like for you to do is attempt to compute this project's IRR. So again, you're going to have a range to start with. So should Mac Industries invest in this equipment considering the required rate of return for the company of 14%? So get this a shot. Remember, we're using the present value of lump sum tables, and you're trying to get close to a net present value of zero. That will tell you what the, required, the, in, the internal rate of return is for this investment. So get this a shot. Push pause on your player, come back in a little bit, and we'll see if we got it. 
All right, so here is what I found. I, I did 10% and 12%. 10% gave me a present value above zero, so we know it's getting more than 10%. And then I did 12%, and it gave me a negative present value of almost $25,000. So I know that this investment is giving me a return of something between 10 and 12%, but I know that it's probably closer to 10% than 12 because of the numbers, the present value that each one is giving me down here. So I know that it's probably closer to 10% than 12%. But again, this is giving me a range. So using this trial and error method, it gives us a range, but there is something we can do to get us even closer to the actual internal rate of return. It's called straight line interpolation. Okay, so let's let's write that down. So straight line interpolation. So in this case, we're going to take the net present value spread. So in other words, this is our spread down here between these two different percentages. So 52.45 minus 24,000, a negative $24,810. So when you subtract a negative, we know that it's the same thing as adding. So when you do this, we come up with 30,055. That's the spread between a positive 52.45 and a negative 24.810. So to find the IRR, I know that it's 10%. I know that it's at least 10%, and then plus a percentage above that. So we're going to take the 52.45, which is the present value at 10% of the cash inflows, and I'm going to divide that by the spread. So 30,055, and multiply that times 2%. When you do that, you should come out with 10.349%. Now keep in mind, in your calculator, this is going to end up being 0.10349. Okay, so I just change it to a percentage by moving the decimal over two places. All right, so you should come up with 10.349%. Now we found this number without using Excel, without using a calculator, but now let's check ourselves and see if we can actually get this number using Excel. So when we put this in Excel, so we found 10.349%. And then putting it in Excel, we get 10.3488. So we came very, very close. In fact, we got it just to three decimal places. So now you see that there are several different ways we can find IRR if we want to find a range knowing whether it's a good investment immediately. If you want the exact IRR, we can use the trial and error method along with straight line interpolation, or we can use Excel.